Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we got a sample of some quartz here behind me we're going to run. came in this bag. This came from Ghana uh, in West Africa. So I'll show you the sample we're going to run here. We're going to run it through our turnkey system and see if we can recover any gold for them. So this is kind of the characteristic of the ore they sent. It looks like it's a, a quartz, mostly a quartz matrix with a little bit of oxidation there, red oxidation. And what I've seen when I've been on my trips to Africa is these miners will shaft down several tens or even hundreds of feet and follow these narrow quartz veins around. And then they bring them up in sacks very similar to this thing here. Uh, and they fit about, depending on the place, 50 to 100 kilos in a sack and they bring it up and they take it to the local milling center. Sometimes they have to wait three or four days to get it milled, but then they get their gold out and go cash it in with the gold buyer. So we'll do kind of a quick rundown of our turnkey system here. It all starts here with the jaw crusher module. This is an eight inch by 12 inch jaw crusher. We'll feed the sample up here in the hopper. It'll get crushed down through the jaw crusher fed up this conveyor, it'll come out about three quarters of an inch minus. Feed into this holding bin here, this little red magnetic vibrating feeder. Buzzes essentially, it just kind of vibrates at a real high frequency. Feeds the material down out of the bottom of the uh, inverted cone there. Up this conveyor, and that magnetic feeder has an adjustable feed rate on it, so you can meter the feed into the hammer mill here and you can adjust it up or down. The hammer mill has a rotor that goes right through there and a bunch of hammers that spin around on that rotor. There's four rows of five, so that machine has 20 chrome steel hammers in it. They're about 20% chrome for high wear rate. Along the bottom of the hammer mill, starting here and wrapping all the way around the bottom, is a screen. And in this hammer mill, it's got a, a point eight millimeter slot cut in it and the slots are about four inches long they run perpendicular to the swing of the hammers and they're an eighth of a millimeter uh 0.8 millimeters in width and so anything in that hammer mill stays in there till it can, can, until it can come out that 0.8 millimeter slot we run water down the hammer mill it mixes with the uh the ore makes a real nice slurry that feeds down onto our four by eight shaker table here. The slurry runs right into that aluminum distributor trough. It has a bunch of gates on the bottom of the trough here that are adjustable so you can spread the feed out evenly over the table. The way the shaker table works is the slurry gets fed evenly and slowly across the table and any dense ore or sulfides or gold settles down in the bottom of the grooves and works their way this way across the table, up towards the water bar here, and down into the number one and number two. Most of the slurry is waste, and it flows right over the grooves, down into this section of the trough, and out into the spiral classifier. That's the tailing section. As the table comes across this way, starting right about right about here, just behind all the grooves, the table gently slopes upward and then flattens off just behind these four long grooves. And what that does is the quartz and the sulfides can work their way across the table until they hit that ramp. And the sulfides will work their way out past the quartz and as soon as the sulfides leave the grooves here, they can't go up the table any farther. And so they form a band of sulfides that comes down here into the number three or middlings bucket. Anything that stays in these four long grooves here can work their way up that ramp and are let out onto a flat sheet of rubber and once the gold and other dense ore particles reach this flat sheet of rubber, 
the water that comes out of this water bar washes them back, try, tries to wash them back down the ramp. The gold is so dense that it can overcome the action of the water and it bounces all the way up under the water bar. And we make this, see how it's a, a sloping ramp here. So the gold works its way up and it, it even tries to climb this ramp a little bit. So you have a really nice formed gold line that comes down here under the water bar and into the number one. The sulfides are washed backwards by the water and they will actually sometimes wash all the way back down into the number three middlings. But sometimes they'll form a little bit of a band here and they'll come into the, the number two concentrates here, what we call it. And then at the very end of the table here, these last two grooves, what we call the safety grooves, run the full length of the table all the way across. So if for some reason, I have seen uh, gold spheres where they get rolled up in the hammer mill. They'll come out these long grooves and then they roll back down the ramp and they roll back down the ramp. But these two long safety grooves come all the way across the table into the number two high grade. And you can see here a little bit of a profile view of our grooves. It's kind of like a, a swoosh where they go gently, slowly into the groove and then they hook backwards, kind of like a check mark or a swoosh. And all, I think there's 36 grooves on this table. All the grooves in the table have that same profile and it works really well. There's very low turbulence as the gold and the sulfides come down into that groove and the hook back here traps them. So it's almost impossible once they get into the bottom of a groove to ever come out again or be washed by the water because all the quartz and all the water is washing over gently and smoothly over the top of those grooves. So there's quite a bit of information on the shaker table. So the number one, the number two, and the number three concentrates are captured here and those can be processed later. The number four tailings comes down into the spiral classifier. You can see it's essentially a settling basin with a big screw auger in the bottom. And all the particles that have a faster settling velocity than this tank or this pond then can float and flow out this thing into our tailings pond or our, our, our water retention pond. All the particles larger than that will sink down and get augered up the screw here, dewatered, and come out in that white bag. We'll go take a look at that in a second. All of the finest, finest particles and all the water are discharged out these three different ports here on the size side of the screw. And depending on which port you use, there's three different sizes or three, three different locations. And this determines how high the water basin is. So on the very lowest port here, that basin is, is very small. And so only the, the largest particles with the fastest settling velocity can settle down in this screw. And those are, that's, you know, if you're talking about quartz, you're probably looking at somewhere between 75 and 100 mesh settles out at that lower point. Everything finer than that gets washed out into the settling pond. This one is somewhere in the neighborhood of 150, and this one is probably 200 to 250 and finer come out with the water into our settling pond here. So we use the spiral classifier for uh, several different reasons. One is it allows us to settle out our tailings, our larger size tailings, auger them up and dewater them so that we, they're much easily uh, transported, we can save them for later, we can handle them a lot easier, and they don't fill up our tailings pond. The fine sediment comes out and settles out in this large underground water tank here. This is, this is just a septic tank that we've buried. It uh, has about a 1,500 gallon holding capacity, and we recirculate the water through the settling pond over and over and over again, so we're reusing the water. But the very fine material that settles out down here probably doesn't have hardly any gold left in it. At 200 or 250 mesh is what we have the setting at. Even if there is gold values in here, we probably can't grind them any finer and recover them with the gravity circuit. Now the 
stuff that augers out over here that is larger than 200 mesh still has some value to it. And it is, it's sand, it's fine. I've done some exper experiments, I'm hoping to do a lot more here this summer, about regrinding these tailings to liberate more gold. So anyway, that was probably way more information than you ever thought you'd know about gold processing equipment. But uh, let's get our sample up into the hopper here. We'll have it go through the crusher and then through the system and we'll see if we can recover any gold. Well, we just finished up running our sample and there's still a little bit of material on the table and it's always good after you run the table or you know either production or with samples to brush the table down and to move everything from the grooves over under the water bar and all the way down to the number one so you can clean off the table and get any residual gold that's stuck in the grooves uh, and like I said especially with a small sample um, you want to get everything moved over so and get the table clean for the next one. So I'm going to just brush off the table with a soft bristled horse brush and get it all cleaned down into the number one and number two, and then we can pan it out and take a look at what we've got. Well, I'll see if I can do this with one hand. The top three grooves here are the most important, so I'm going to get those brushed out. And oftentimes there's a lot of residual gold that gets hung up there. And I'm just going to brush them all the way across under the water bar. And this is where you'll start to see that gold come out. It's coming there. Looks like there's some bigger flakes down here maybe that are working their way down. But I'm just going to continue to brush out all these grooves 
get all the little bits of the sample moved all the way down. And then we'll see what we have in the number one and number two. So here's what's in the number two. And it's quite a bit more than it is in the number one because those safety grooves bring over a little bit more material. Uh, and then again, I brushed it down and a lot of it goes to the number two. But we'll, uh, we'll pan this one out first and then we'll check on the number one and see how much gold we got in each one. All right, well, we got the number two pan down here. And typically what we found in the past is that about 5% ends up in the number two. A little bit of gold gets down there. There it is, you can see it coming in there. It's really fine. See if I can get it kind of piled up here a little bit. There you go, you can kind of see the line there in the pan. So there's what was in the number two, and now let's give the number one a shot. And like I say, there should be, you know, 10 to 20 times as much gold in the number one. Well, here's the stuff that ended up in the number one bucket. And there's hardly anything in there. And I bet 95% of that came from when I brushed down the table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in this pan over here, and then I'll pan it into this pan so I don't lose anything. We'll see if we got any gold, and then I'll just bag the whole sample up and send it off back to the customer here. So let me get this panned out, and we'll see what we got. I got our pan down here. There's. I don't know, maybe a teaspoon of stuff left in there. But as I swirl this around, you'll see the gold come out on the left side there. And I don't know how much we ran. I didn't I didn't get a weight on the bag, but it was probably 50 pounds, maybe 75 pounds. What's that? 20, 20 to 30 kilos somewhere in there. So that's a pretty good little showing. A bunch of really, really fine gold up here, super powdery stuff. It gets coarser as it comes across. And it looks like there's even a few larger flakes in there that are a little bit different colored. I don't know if there's any mercury in there or not, but this, uh, this gold up here is really, really yellow, really gold colored. Uh, so it's probably a high percentage gold. It's not alloyed with a bunch of silver or copper. So let me see how close I can get you here. Hold on. We'll try for an up-close shot here. Here's the, the super, super fine stuff all along this edge here. It gets a little coarser pieces, maybe up to 100 mesh. There may be a 50 mesh piece there. But it's all pretty fine. This is either an oxide or a sulfide here. And then you've got some of these bigger, bigger flake-looking things there. But like I said, for a 50 to 75 pound sample, that's not too bad. All right, well, we're all done. We got our uh, number two and our number one concentrates all bagged up and ready to ship back to our potential customer in Ghana. So does anybody know how to ship to Ghana? Well, thanks guys for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments or want any info on our equipment, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.